So, we need to talk. Eight months ago, I posted a video saying that in our inaugural video, we would be reviewing Birdman and The Room. And now it's eight months later, and I don't feel like doing that anymore. Initially, when I came up with the concept of Spilled Popcorn, I wanted the show to follow a format not too dissimilar from Red Letter Media's Half in the Bag series, in which an episode opens and closes with a skit that's connected to an ongoing story. I even went so far as to shoot and edit our opening skit. And it was terrible. Maybe I'll upload it one day so you can feel horribly awkward watching me pretend like I have any clue what I'm doing. Then, I redesigned the show to be more akin to a lot of other film critics in which I just stare down the camera and discuss the movie. But again, it was just too awkward. Still proud of this Mad Max Mighty Joe Young joke though. Look at that Photoshop. Mm -hmm. Truth is, I hated being on camera, and in a format that's built on two people openly criticizing a movie seemingly off the cuff, or me staring directly into the camera sweating constantly, I didn't trust myself not to stutter my way through the entire ordeal. I don't know how the folks at RLM do it, but props to them. So it wasn't realizing that I was trying too hard to emulate other YouTube critics that I finally landed on the way I wanted to do the show. My written reviews mean a lot to me. They take a lot of time to put together and I always try to reveal something of myself in them to the reader. Except for my earlier views. Those were fucking shit. Really enjoyed saving Mr. Banks despite it being overly sentimental at times. Emma Thompson mostly definitely deserves all the nods and maybe even when she may receive for her performance though? What the f***? I like having a script I can refer to, and I like having my points well organized and planned before ever hitting the record button. So this is the format, and the real benefit is that the visuals will only serve in helping to illustrate the points I'm trying to make. You won't have to stare at my stupid face trying to muster up a coherent thought. It benefits me as an editor, and it helps me keep my reviews concise. But for any one of my 14 subscribers who wanted to know what I had to say about Birdman in the room, they're both brilliant in completely different ways. I thought Tommy Wiseau was the most bizarre person ever. Plastic is very harmful for your, for, your, for, for your body. But at the same time, if you look at the plastic, what we made in America, let's say 10 years ago, compared to today, two different things. That's right. But then I ran into a glorious man called Neil Breen. But that's a video for another time. I'm not ready for this. Now that I've gotten all that shit out of the way, let's talk about a film that is anything but brilliant. Um, for, uh, for, uh, uh, Ever since M. Night Shyamalan surgically removed whatever it was that made him a creative, innovative, and masterful storyteller, going to the theater to watch his work is something comparable to being dragged through gravel, face down, naked. Less than a mere 10 years ago, M. Night was being hailed as the next Spielberg. Everyone knew his name, and his films were met with heavy anticipation. In the history of cinema, I can't recall a single director that has gone from being critically revered to globally reviled in such a short amount of time. Studios went from fighting over him to locking their doors. His name attached to a trailer would generate boos and laughter from audiences in the theater. He became the joke of the film industry. Loyal fans, including myself, defended films like Lady in the Water and Even the Happening by saying they were trying to subvert the traditional narrative or feel reminiscent to the classic, poorly acted B-movies of the 50s. What? No! It wasn't until after having seen After Earth that I realized something. M. Night isn't inspired anymore. His desire to tell new, exciting, and engrossing stories up and vanished like his name on all the After Earth trailers and posters. So, it's no surprise that his approach with The Visit was to play it safe. A small budget found footage horror film shot by children? He essentially absolved himself from the burden of spinning as many plates as a director, affording him the opportunity to focus on as few aspects as possible with regard to the technical parts of filmmaking. It's completely understandable. He of all people must have known that he had to lift himself back up from the bottom of the barrel, and the visit seemed like the most effective way in achieving that goal. Unfortunately, it didn't pan out for him. At all. The first time I watched the trailer for The Visit, I had to watch it again immediately, because it was just that funny. The elderly man being caught with a gun in his mouth saying, I was just cleaning it. 
the mother reassuring her worried children by saying, They're just old. And the horrendously bad voiced over scream suggesting the girl is being shoved in an oven when the footage being shown clearly shows her willingly climbing into it. Inside the oven to clean it. Stop! Now stop! It was a cacophony of awkwardness. At that point, I decided to let the trailer be my entertainment, and to avoid seeing the movie altogether. But, life got in the way as it does, and a group hangout resulted in me having to sit in a crowded theater while the visit made visual threats to my one working eye. This film is a mess, in virtually every way. The story and eventual trademark M. Night twist were so predictable that I was overcome with boredom not even 30 minutes into the film. When your grandparents tell you not to visit a specific location in the house, that's a hint. When people in the town constantly continue to talk about a specific event happening in the town, that's a hint. When the writer finds a ham-fisted way to assure that the mother never gets the opportunity to see her parents even though she's letting her grandchildren visit them for a week, that's a huge fucking hint. When all of this is clearly illustrated less than 20 minutes into the film, that's lazy writing. And it's boring. So as an audience member, all I'm left with are jump scares, bad acting, and a 14-year-old who makes cringe-worthy jokes and awkwardly freestyle raps. Now, Blumhouse... B Bloom... Bloomhouse? Productions, the studio that released the film, tried to dilute the incompetence of the film by labeling it as a horror comedy. But the comedy comes from what was supposed to be horror, and what was supposed to be comedy just makes you feel like scarab beetles are burrowing into your face. All this being said though, the film has one saving grace, and it's the final 20 minutes. Everything builds up to a climax that is so illogical and tonally confusing that it reaches the level of, so bad it's good. At one point I leaned into Natalie and told her I have no idea how I'm supposed to feel right now. We both agreed that during the climax, we couldn't tell at all whether we were supposed to find what was happening to be terrifying or hilarious. Ultimately, we decided it was hilarious because it was likely intended to be frightening. Then, after the film feels like it's reached its natural ending, we get one more scene in which the mother stares into the audience and demands that they believe the film was really about not holding on to your anger. First off, fuck you. Don't pretend this film has any semblance of a subtext. And secondly, don't bluntly spell it out for the audience in such a heavy-handed way. It's insulting and manipulative. I left the theater not angry, just disappointed. <laughs> I sound like an angry dad, but also a little angry because we decided to see it on a Friday night. Tickets ain't cheap, kids. From a technical perspective, it was also clear that M. Night had next to no knowledge as to what makes an effective found footage film effective. Most importantly, don't start your found footage film with opening credits listing you as the director, especially when the following film claims itself to have been directed by a little girl. It should just start. Also, found footage doesn't mean edited, color-corrected, high-definition footage. The quality needs to be poor, almost deteriorated. That's why the Blair Witch Project is so effective. It feels, and more importantly, looks genuine. If your film, supposedly shot by a teenage girl, looks like it was shot with an Ari Alexa, then you've severely missed the point. Technical issues like this constantly take the viewer out of the film, and when they're not into it, they'll be more prone to notice its faults. Sure, you may have given yourself fewer plates to spin, M. Night, but if you're still losing control this poorly, maybe you should rethink your passion. Or if you've lost it, try to remember what it was in the first place. I know it sounds like I'm criticizing you, but I still love you. Deep down. Deep, deep down. So, if you haven't figured it out by now, I didn't much care for the visit. Was it worse than After Earth? No. But I can't say that the two aren't neck and neck. Is it worse than The Happening? Absolutely. And that's really the biggest problem. The Happening is a work of comic genius, though obviously unintended. I can watch it anytime and laugh non-stop at how masterfully terrible it is. The visit, despite its climax, is boring, predictable, and awkward. It's a chore to sit through and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. When I watch films like The Sixth Sense and Unbreakable, I see heart, passion, innovation, and inspiration. They felt like stories worth telling, stories with a purpose. You connected to them, cared about them, even loved them. The visit is a hollow attempt to rekindle a fire that's long since burned out, and it left me cold and let down. There's a plane. I'm just about to start my first movie review, and there's a plane. There's a car. There's a there's a there's a car outside. Damn. There's all the cars. All the cars are outside right now. They're all outside, and they're all the loudest cars. All the cars. Cars. All the cars. Stop it, cars. Damn it. No. The cat, 
the cat would like to give her review for the visit. Lisbeth, what did you think of the visit? Really? What else? She was a fan. Okay, we're going to have to do that again. <laughs>